Hi there and welcome to the video. If you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Nick and I'm a reseller. I buy stuff and I sell it on the internet for profit and that is how I earn my living. If you're a regular, welcome back. This is gonna be another sales roundup. So the format of this video is going to be, I'm going to share with you a bunch of recent sales from eBay. Just gonna pick out a bunch of hopefully interesting stuff or stuff that you've seen us pick up in haul videos or sourcing videos. And uh, yeah, you'll get to see what we managed to sell some of this stuff for. So we will start with an antique, which for me is a little bit unusual. If you follow this channel, you'll know that I tend to sell kind of toys and games that are fairly modern a lot of the time, lots of things like this, these car parts here, but I do like to dabble in the vintage. So the first few, well certainly this first one, is antique. This, as you can see from the title there, is an antique silver cigarette case. Now I picked this up years ago. I actually picked it up along with a bunch of other silver items. All of the other silver stuff I actually auctioned off last year when we did a charity auction on this channel. Um, I kept this item back because I really found it interesting and I wanted to do some research on it and find out about it. So this was the only piece I kept from that um, pickup. I got it at a village fete. It owes me a couple of pounds, so I got it ridiculously cheap really. And yeah, I did my research and then I asked my good friend Edward from Antiques Arena and he put me right on my errors. Um, yeah, 95, um, so solid silver uh, from London. Uh, the date on the hallmarks there brings it to 1942 and the CK was the maker's mark, which was Charles Kirkham. Um, so yeah, and it had this inscription on it, DH McW. Um, as you can see, it wasn't in the best of condition. It had a few dents, um, tarnishing and what have you. So I put it on auction. That was the starting price that it went for. It only got the maiden bid. Um, and I started it at there or thereabouts at scrap value. Um, and it didn't go beyond that. But I'm happy with that. From my couple of pounds investment, um, that's a pretty good return. So it went for the 59.99 maiden bid and it's gone. So I'm pleased with that. This next item, let me just find it, is this. And again, another antique item. This was a really cool thing. I can't for the life of me remember where I got this. It's been knocking around for ages, but I just can't remember picking it up. It's an old police whistle. Um, as you can see on the close up image there, uh, it's the Metropolitan and it's made by J Hudson and Co, uh, Birmingham. It's not in the best of condition. When I did my research, there were much finer examples than this. This was quite dented and scratched and tarnished. Um, so I thought I'd priced it about right at 15, but it went so quick. It was on a matter of an hour or two before it got snapped up at 15. So maybe I could have priced higher, but when I did my research, like I say, it didn't look in as good condition as others that had gone for around this money or less. So yeah, anyway, I'm happy it's gone. It's been sat around for ages. Um, yeah, pleased with that, but I can't remember where I got it or how much I paid. And right, is that the last of the antique items? Yes. So on to tarot cards. Now, those that have been following the channel for a while will remember I picked up a bundle of tarot cards. It was, I think, 15 different sets of tarot from the same car boot sale store. And I paid £20 a lot. So a little over a pound a pack. And I listed them while I was doing this listing challenge with Rod recently. And within a day or so, we had sold one, two, three, four, five, six sets. We've sold six sets already within about a day, a day and a half. Um, so this one actually went to a subscriber. So thank you so much, Chris, if you're watching. He bought this set that's on screen, this Grail Tarot. Uh, the cards there are sealed. So bear that in mind if you're, if you're trying to think of what these things are worth. This is a brand new set. 
as was this one, the cards were sealed in this also. Um, I think he made an offer on the first one at 25 and he paid the 20 on the second one, I believe. So £45 order. And then this third set here, this one's going to America. Um, so they are paying international shipping, which I think was 15 um, and they went for 30 So yeah, tarot cards worth looking out for. The ones I've just shown you are were new, uh, so bear that in mind price-wise. But if you can find vintage, older issues of tarot cards, it seems that they're quite collected, quite sought after, um, but they are worth looking out for. So next, now those of you again who've been following the channel will know I picked up a job lot of phones which was a bit of a bad buy I thought because the phones were locked and I showed in our last um, sales roundup that the phones which couldn't be used because they were like admin locked so I couldn't get into them and reset the phones. I paid £20 for a bundle of phones and loads of accessories. Um, I had to get rid of the phones as they were for base, to basically get my £20 investment back and then I've been making money on all the accessories. So I thought I'd share these to kind of carry on that story. So as you can see, these um, TP-Link desktop switch thingies, <laughs> I've sold that one for, I, I took an offer on that one I think it was, for 30 and then this one went at the asking price of 35 and this one, without its power lead, went for 15. So as you can see, going back to that original pickup of the phones, the money was in all of the extras. Um, I also sold uh, like a router modem thing for 40, I think it was, and a BT modem for a tenner, and I've still got a few other bits left. So that pickup has ended up being a good pickup. Um, so really pleased with that. So moving on, clothing. Now, I I tend to sell all of the stuff like you've just seen, the hard goods, the toys, the games, that sort of stuff, um, electronics. My wife, Andrea, deals primarily with the clothing. Um, but I'm sharing some of these because I had a hand in some of these. So this one, I picked this up. Um, we were discussing this, I can't remember exactly, I think this came from a jumble sale along with a load of other football shirts. This is an American football shirt, um, Dan Marino, Miami Dolphins shirt, and so I can claim credit for buying it. This is Andrea's listing, so she can claim credit for listing it. Um, we took an offer of 39, no was it, no, 35 we took an offer of, and this again is a subscriber, um, whose name I think it was Mike, um, forgive me if I'm wrong, but thank you so much if you're watching for picking this up, and likewise this next one here, these boots, again this is Andrea's listing, so she takes full credit for that, but I spotted these and pick these up. I think we paid two pounds. Oh, that shirt that we just looked at, um, I think again was two pounds from the jumble sale, if I'm remembering rightly, I could be wrong on that. Uh, but these boots, I'm pretty sure were two. And yeah, these are emu brown Australian sheepskin uh, faux shearling lined Paddington high boots. That's Andrea's title. Um, but yeah, really pleased with these. They, they've gone for 50, or did we take an offer? I don't think we did on these. I think they went for full price. But yeah, really pleased uh, we picked those up and we got a great return on those. They're a bit like Ugg boots, I believe, or similar anyway. And then more clothing, um, and I actually listed these. Um, these came as part of a local pickup, like a, a mini kind of haul, uh, a private sale we did. Um, I can't remember in the haul, we, we bought a lot of stuff. I think these owe us about 15, 20 pounds from that haul. They were barely used. Um, as you can see from these pictures, look like they've been worn once. The soles, you can see in this picture of the soles, there's virtually no wear on the tread. So uh, I couldn't sell them as new because they had been worn but 
I'd describe them as, as pretty much like new, hardly worn in excellent condition. Um, they were really nice soft leather ones. Um, and yeah, they sold super fast. We did take an offer of 85 on these, but more than happy with that. So a great return on investment there. Um, DMs always tend to do well for us. Even if they are worn and very obviously worn, there will still be a market for them. So yeah, that's some clothing. That's the end of the clothing for this video. Um, next, cassettes. Again, if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know I picked up a massive haul of, how many was it? Was it 600 or 300? I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of cassettes, and I've been selling them off. Actually, this pair came from a more recent pickup of a cassette box um, that was full of cassettes. And these two Elvis ones you can see now were in that pickup. So it's volume one and volume two uh, on pink cassettes with paper labels, and they sold fast for the asking price of £10. So that was nice to see those move. And um, because they weren't in one combined chunky case I could ship these side by side in a jiffy bag and they'll still go as a large, large letter so postage was cheap as well but actually I believe this buyer bought three items so it went as a packet in the end anyway um, but yeah this buyer I think they bought a couple of cassette lots and maybe a CD with it I'm not sure now but yeah the cassettes are still going well they are slowing down because I'm getting to the kind of the dregs of that main haul uh, and soon I'm going to job lot the rest uh, and get shocked. But yeah, happy with that sale. Um, next. Ah, oh, this sold the other day. Um, I listed this. I was up very late listing into the small hours because I was on this listing challenge. And this typewriter that you can see on screen now, I listed it for 50 and it sold within hours. I aimed, I didn't aim at the very top these had gone for, I aimed kind of middle of the road. The, the case wasn't in the best condition, but the unit itself was really quite nice. I had to actually do a little repair, the Q uh, hammer, whatever you would call it, the, the little letter arm that strikes the paper. It was sticking every time you press the Q, and I, I tend to with typewriters check every button or, um, the, or every letter, every key. Um, but yeah, but the Q was the only letter that was sticking, I, and I had to bend the letter arm um, to get that working properly. Um, but yeah, sorted it out, listed it for 50, uh, free shipping on that, and that sold within hours. So really happy with that. that this was a charity shop pickup and I think we paid eight might have been nine eight or nine pounds um, a few months back and it's just sat on the side and yeah sold quick which is fantastic okay next right so these were a bit of an experiment um, it was in a uh, a video when we were out and about on a jumble trail thing. Uh, the same store where I picked up that uh, model kit of a steam engine. Um, Andrew and I experimented with various um, pottery items. I spotted these Denby vases and we got those. I think it was £3 we paid on this pair. And they have finally gone for 20 And on the same stall I spotted this, which is Glindary. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Glindary Pottery from Sennybridge. Um, so it's uh, Welsh, handmade in Wales, as you can see there. And this was just really nice. Just took a punt on it, really. We're trying to learn a little bit about ceramics. And that has si finally sold for 20. Or did we take an offer? We may have taken an offer. Uh, it's not showing on screen. Um, yeah, and I think we paid a couple of pounds for that one uh, with the little plate there. So yeah, very happy with that. Okay, next, something a little bit different. These are Mechanics brand Impact gloves. And these were only listed a couple of days ago. They sold quick as well, and they sold internationally 
Um, so the buyer paid, it was either 10 or 12 pounds for international track shipping on these. Now I believe these gloves are popular with uh, paintballers. Um, I think that's what they tend to sell for, so you to protect your hands when you're playing paintball. Um, but yeah, happy with that. Can't remember where I picked these up. Um, they've been sat around again for ages. Finally put them on and they sold super fast. So yeah, that was great. Next we have... Oh yeah, this Kinex motor. Now I had a Kinex set um, which had never been used. The contents were still sealed in bags. And I looked into selling the set as it was and they really weren't selling for much. And the packaging was really in a bad state. Contents were new and unused, but the packaging was all bashed up. And the sets really weren't fetching a lot. So I elected to split out a few parts that had higher value, uh, like this motor. And then I sold off all of the, the you know, connecting rods and all the other small parts and pieces as a bundle, which is already sold for, I think, 15 and then this, as you can see, is sold for 10 with free shipping. And I've got a couple of other bits that are still listed. And overall, that would give me a better return than selling the set with the bashed up box in the condition it was in. Um, so I thought I'd just share this. It's always worth looking at your options with splitting things down. Sometimes it pays to do it that way. That's that. Uh, next. Ah, oh, this... This is nothing special. This is just a set-top box. Uh, it's a Dion set-top box with the remote. I just thought I'd share this because I picked up, as you may have seen in a recent video, I picked up some TVs recently. One of the TVs that I paid a fiver for, it wasn't the Sony, it was one of the other two in that video, came with a set-top box. Still sat on top of the telly. Um, and that sold for 20 free shipping. So I paid a fiver for a TV and then the box that, you know, was just kind of chucked in with it um, has got me in profit already. So now the TV owes me nothing. Once that sells, that'll be pure profit after fees. So yeah, just thought I'd share that. The, the set-top boxes do still sell. Uh, there's not great money in most of them, but yeah, worth picking up if you can get them cheap enough. Uh, what else do we have? A board game. Now I do enjoy selling board games. I haven't picked that many up this year, to be honest. Um, I can't actually remember where this one came from. Actually, I think this was in that massive haul we had about this time last year. Um, and it's just sat around and I've never got around to checking it and listing it. So it owes me very little because um, we got a great deal on that haul. But this is Can't Stop, really nice vintage game. Um, yeah, and it sold for full asking price, which was 35 and free shipping. So yeah, I still do enjoy picking up my board games, but I haven't managed to find many gems this year. Um, but I thought I'd share that one. Next, we have, ah, this. Now this is all Andrea. Um, I was at a stall picking up a box of cassettes, it was in a video, whilst Andrea was busy rummaging through jewellery. Now she picked this up, I think she paid about £3 for it, and I remember when we shared it in the, uh, the haul video on a Sunday, people were questioning whether that could be genuine turquoise, because it was quite a big chunk of rock. Um, but she did her research, um, it was turquoise. And it sold for, now it says 99 there. I think we might have taken 90. I think we either sent an offer or took an offer on this. But yeah, that was an amazing return from, I'm pretty sure it was three pounds we invested. We've not had any comeback, so the, the buyer is certainly happy. So yeah. Happy days. Andrea's still experimenting and learning about jewellery, but it's going fantastically well. I think that's her best sale yet. So, what have we got left? A couple of items left. Ah, I thought I'd share this. Uh, these are worth picking up. This is a Philips 
Home Solaria. So it's like a face tanning thing. And this sold within 24 hours for £50 plus shipping. Um, so well worth picking up. Uh, as you can see here, I took a picture with the lights off uh, to show all of the bulbs working. Um, yeah, and some pictures around it to show all angles. But yeah, super fast, that did not stick around. Again, I looked at completed. People had achieved slightly higher than this, but I, I had a look at what was currently available and pitched it around the top of what was currently available. Um, and it went, it did the trick. Fantastic. Packed this super, super well because those bulbs are really fragile. Uh, so that went in a really big box with loads of padding. Uh, hopefully that's got there safely. And finally, right, this I'm super happy with. I paid £15 at a jumble trail stall for this. Um, it's in a video actually. And it sold for its full asking of £119.99. It's an HP LaserJet uh, printer, but it's also a scanner and photocopier. Um, it's a fairly up-to-date model. I got an absolute bargain on it and it took a while to sell. Um, I guess I've had it three or four months now, but yeah, worth waiting for. Um, shipping wise, um, I elected to go with Parcel Force and I think that came in a little bit under £15 to ship. So. There's a big chunk of profit in there. It was actually fairly easy to test. I think it, I showed me in a video testing this uh, when I was listing it. But yeah, don't shy away from this stuff. If you've got the storage space to keep this sort of stuff, there is loads of profit in it. If you can, uh, yeah, have the nerve to tackle the big stuff. So, that's it. I'm just gonna come out of here. There you go. Hopefully that was a good variety of stuff. There'll be something in there that's maybe inspiring or will stick in your mind and help you find a bargain while you're out and about. So thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought below and I'll see you in the next video.